Hi, welcome back. This session I'd like to focus on one strand of information trading, where rather than wait for the information to come out, you, you try to track people you think have access to that information and you do whatever they're doing. In particular, I'm talking about the convention of following the insiders. Insiders are those who know more than you do. It doesn't just include the SEC definition of insiders, which might be managers and board members. Obviously, they know more than you do, but also other people in the know-how. It might be investment bankers. It might be the company's traditional bankers. It might be the company's suppliers. Essentially, you're looking for people you think might have traces of information you don't, and you look at what they do rather than what they say. Are they buying? Are they selling? And you try to do the same thing. So let's step back. Insiders have an advantage over the rest of us. They know more about the company, especially if those insiders happen to work at the company. They have access to information that the rest of us don't. Okay? So they are the ultimate insiders. Analysts, equity research analysts who used to track companies, used to be part insiders as well because until about two decades ago, maybe even a decade ago, they had access to at least pieces of information that you and I did not. Increasingly, though, that advantage is dissipated. Legally, at least, equity research analysts should not have access to information that the rest of us don't. So analysts have become more outsiders than insiders, at least in the U.S. Outside the U.S., it is entirely possible that analysts are more insiders than outsiders because outside the U.S., it is possible that companies reveal information to equity research analysts that the rest of us don't. So one way to look to see whether insiders have an advantage is to look at trading by insiders and see if it precedes returns that move in the same direction. In other words, do insiders buy before stock prices go up and sell before stock prices go down? The disadvantage here that we have in this, in this kind of research is we're focusing on self-revealed trades by insiders. What I mean by that is, at least in the U.S., if you're an insider, and you're going to trade, you have to let the SEC know when you trade. So the, the first set of research that I'm, going to, that I'm going to point to looks at this insider trading, legal insider trading, where insiders tell the SEC, I bought this much or sold this much last year. Let's see if that insider buying and insider selling is a good signal of what's going to happen to the stock price. This is actually the result of a very old study, but I'm going to start with this one because I want to talk about some things that have changed in the market since. This study, actually, all that the researcher looked at was what happens to the stock returns of companies after insider buying and insider selling. So the red dots are the, ins uh, are the buy group. These are the companies where insider buying vastly exceeded insider selling, and the green is the insider selling group. And this is in the 20 months following the insider trade. So the, the time in which that insider revealed to the SEC, I'm, you know, I'm trading, I'm buying or I'm selling, these are the returns in the 20 months following. If you look at the stocks where insiders were buying, those stocks are up about 35% in the 20 months following. The stocks where insiders were selling, those stocks are up only 5%. So while both groups went up, the insider buy group did much better than the insider sell group. Pretty interesting, right? Maybe even promising. Let's take a little deeper. Before you go out and start buying stocks where insiders are buying, remember it's a noisy signal. In about four of ten stocks where insiders are buying, the stock price actually goes down. So the studies, especially since that, that's been brought home, neither insider buying nor insider selling is a perfect signal. It's not even close to being perfect as a signal of future price movements. If you break the sample down into insider buyers versus insider selling, there's actually a fairly interesting finding. Stocks we have insider selling have returns of about 14.4% in the 12 months after the insider selling, whereas stocks with insider buying have about 22.2% in the 12 months following insider buying. So insider buy stocks earn about 7.8%, but it's not 50% or 80%. So even the stocks we have insider buying don't have you know, tremendously high returns relative to the insider selling. And finally, here's an interesting finding as well. Studies that have looked at small companies versus large companies find that insider trading is much more in, in much more predictive of returns in small companies than large companies. That shouldn't surprise you. 
In large companies, you have a hundred different ways of getting information about the companies. Insiders don't know that much more than investors in this company. So a company like Coca-Cola, it's not clear that insiders are that far ahead of the rest of the market. In a small company where very few people track the company, it's possible that insider information is much more significant. So maybe it's not that surprising that the link is stronger between insider trading and returns in small companies versus large companies. Now, there have been studies, especially in the last 15 or 20 years, that have, that have updated these, this research. And part of the reason you need an update is the SEC has both expanded its definition of insiders to go well past the original definition of just officers in the company, managers and board, board members, to include other people who have access to information that the rest of the market doesn't. In fact, the SEC definition has become so broad that if you have information that the rest of the market doesn't, you could be very close to the line of what constitutes an insider, according to the SEC. So you have hedge fund managers being brought to the dock because they have access, they've, they've used information that the rest of the market does not have. So the SEC's definition of what an insider is has widened, and they've gone after insiders much more aggressively. Companies, in turn, have become also much more stringent about how they monitor employees because companies are often held responsible for what their employees do. They they require employees to sign agreements when they become employees. Even low-level employees are required to be much more careful about how they use information in their trading and how they trade. And as, And perhaps as a consequence, when you look at legal insider trading, the price consequences have become much smaller. In other words, if you look at insider buying and insider selling today, and you look at the after effects, the price effect has decreased, partly because perhaps the SEC has become much more stringent about the rules, and partly because information on insider trading has become much more widespread. 30 years ago, unless you worked in New York and had access to the SEC filings by insiders, you might not have known what the insider buying or selling was. Today online on Yahoo Finance, you can find which stocks insider buying is greatest in, which stocks insider selling is greatest in. So for whatever reason, the price effects of legal insider trading have decreased. So knowing which stocks insiders are buying and insiders are selling is far less useful today than it was 20 or 30 years ago. Now, one of the interesting aspects to remember here is many of the earlier studies looked at the returns you could have made from the date of the insider filing. So they'd go to the SEC, they'd look at the date of the filing of the SEC by the insider and start computing returns from that day. But what they were failing to recognize is an insider might file with the SEC on June 4th, but you and I might not have access to that information till two weeks later or three weeks later. So in fact, one interesting study looked at returns on stocks around the insider reporting date. So that's the date that they file with the SEC. And then the summary date, which is the date you and I have access to that information. So interestingly, there is a run-up after the reporting date. So these are insider buys. But by the time you or I get the information, much of the run-up has ended. So if you're getting your insider trading data from online sources, it might already be too late. Much of the price run-up, if it's good, if it's buying, might already have happened. And much of the price run-down, if it's, if it's selling, might already have happened. So it's not clear how you can use insider information to actually make money, especially given the lag and when that information gets to you. Some other points note about insider trading. Not all insiders are made equal. So since insiders are defined as all employees in a company, a lowly employee, somebody at the lower rungs of management, might have far less access to information. In fact, will have far less access to information than somebody at the upper end. So there are actually studies that have focused in just on insider trading by top executives and find that focusing just on large trades made by top executives is a much more promising strategy than all trades, all buys or all sells. A little more work, but I think it might be worth doing that work. Second note is that, you know, remember th 30 years ago, the only way to trade on stock was to buy, or, to buy the stock or sell short on the stock. Today, there are a lot more ways you can trade. You can trade through options. You can trade through derivatives. You might even be able to trade through exchange-traded funds where that stock is a large part of that fund. So you might have to track lots of different places if you want to track insiders, not just the buying and the selling on the stock. 
And thirdly, the knowledge about insider trading is far more useful in companies where there isn't a more, lot more information about the company. Or you don't have 50 equity research analysts tracking the company. Point I made, um, we made earlier, but a point well worth noting. So if you're going to use insider trading, it might have the biggest bang for the buck in small companies where there are few or no analysts tracking the company and less in larger companies, widely followed companies, where there's a lot of trading. Now, there's an interesting side story here. Much of the research I've quoted, in fact, all of the research I've quoted is based on looking at SEC filings by insiders. But only those insiders who pass that insider trading rule that you can't trade based, because the insider trading laws don't allow you to trade ahead of information. So if you're trading ahead of information, you can't even file with the SEC because it'd be illegal. So what you'd really like is an access to a quasi-SEC that keeps track of illegal insider trading. Does it happen? Absolutely. You look at any big news announcement, you can see that there's insider trading going on, illegal insider trading going on, and here's how. You can see the jump in the trading volume, and you can see the price start to drift up before good news. Of course, you don't know because you actually start to look back only after the news announcement, but before good earnings announcements, good acquisition announcements, you see the price start to drift up. So clearly there are some people taking advantage of insider information who don't file with the SEC. Do these people make money? Well, it's difficult to tell because we don't know who they are, but when they get caught, it looks like they get caught making money. So basically, you could, it's, it's, I think, fairly obvious that there is Ill illegal insider trading before big news announcements and that those people make money. And if you could get access to those illegal insider trading information, you could make money. And that, of course, is the, 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 the holy grail if you're looking for making money of insiders, looking for clues that insiders are getting active and which direction they're getting active in. This is, I think, the reason technical trading rules that look at trading volume might actually be a good add-on, even if you're a believer in traditional intrinsic value investing, because timing is key here. Because you're getting ahead of the game, you're getting ahead of news announcements. So if you can find a way to track what insiders are doing, not legal insiders, but, le but illegal insiders, you essentially have found the way to make money of, of insider trading. So as you think about bringing in trading on information, think about what insiders are doing. But the real load, the, the, the place where you're going to go to make money is not legal insider trading, which is what you see filed with the SEC, but illegal insider trading. And the clues there are going to be on the tape. Trading volume jumps in the price, drift up in the price before something is happening. And that might be the more promising strategy to make money. Thank you very much for listening.